they've done it again! The Marlins win it! 41st comeback. How do you guys keep doing this? <laughs> you know, I mean, we've done it so many times, so yeah, that was, that was exciting. The drought is over! 20 years of waiting has come to an end here in Pittsburgh! It's time to party in Miami! The Marlins had a plethora of special moments in 2023. Off the top of my head, sweeping the Atlanta Braves, coming back from 5-0 against the Phillies. But this one may take the cake. Steven Strom, Kyle Seeloff. Kyle, I remember this uh, August 13th day at Lone Depot Park. It was a Sunday against the big bad Bronx Bombers. The New York Yankees were in town, and you know you always get a great crowd when the Yanks are in town. Jeff Nelson was doing the game with you. I remember we did that Saturday show with him. We had a bunch of Yankee fans here for Jeff, and there was a lot of buzz. I mean, the Marlins, you have to think, in that moment, they were coming out of the All-Star break. It was tough sledding for a little bit, but um, we'll get into the comeback. But just what do you remember, and how special was this one as far as the season goes? Well, I think it was a special win for a couple of reasons. You mentioned the issues coming out of the All-Star break, a team that went into the break 14 games over 500. I think more about this particular sequence of events, the weekend and things leading up to it, the emergence of Josh Bell and Jake Berger. Yep. They were acquired just a couple of short weeks before this big walk-off, the improbable walk-off here at Lone Depot Park against the Yankees. So I think about Bell, I think about Berger, I think about the struggles, and I think about the magnitude of that series. The Marlins were coming off that series victory in Cincinnati. Remember, Josh Bell had a big impact. He was oh. the first Marlin ever to hit a home run from both sides yep. of the plate in the same game. So Miami comes home and you come into this entire weekend series and look back at it now. The Yankees win game one nine to four. But remember the Yankees came into the series 59 and 56. There was a lot of pressure on them in New York to get their season turned around. And they felt what a better opportunity, regardless of what the Marlins had done, then go beat up on the Marlins. The Marlins were 50, 60 and 56. So was it a pivotal point in the Marlins season? I would say no, because they had some sustainability down the stretch where they kept on winning. It was extremely pivotal. It was crushing for the New York Yankees Absolutely. what transpired in this game on that Sunday. So let's get into it, Kyle. I remember Garrett Cole just pitching phenomenally. He actually went opposite Yuri Perez that day. Yep. But this was a game where Garrett Cole had his best stuff. The Yankees um, had a 7-1 to one lead in the sixth inning. And then Havoc and I guess just the Marlins 2023 season just continued because um, what we saw that Sunday – I don't know, and I'm not trying to be histrionic, but I don't know if we're going to see that for quite some time. It was the largest comeback in franchise history, the largest deficit, rather. Uh, five runs in the ninth inning, um, but let's kind of recap it here. It started with a Yuli Gurriel double, a Nick Fortes single, Jazz Chisholm Jr. He walked, so he had the bases loaded. Josh Bell hits that comebacker against Clay Holmes, just like the Jordan Hicks one against yeah. St. Louis. Yeah. He throws it away. Two run score, all of a sudden it's seven to five. And of course, Luis Arise comes up to bat with uh, runners on the corners. It was Bell and Jazz. And um, Luis Arise delivered that triple, tie the ball game up. And then Jake Berger in the ninth rips a single on a 2 1 count. I don't know why I remember it was a 2 1 count, but the Marlins score five and they win eight to seven. Just an unbelievable victory for the Marlins. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if you work back, I'm, I'm still stunned. Go back and look at it. The Yankees had. Billy McKinney nowhere near left field. I mean, they totally had vacated left field, and it just allowed Berger an opportunity to, I mean, it. I, I remember vividly saying it. I mean, he's going to get a base knock. I mean, if he can get the ball in the air out of the infield, the Marlins yeah. are going to win the game. The Yankees, I, I thought defensively positioned. I thought they were positioned terribly. And you got the De La Cruz walk. Now, the Arise triple put the entire thing in motion, right? Yep. I mean, that was, that was incredible because that tied things up. And, and then you're thinking... They're, they're going to find a way to win this. And, you know, Jake Berger came into that game. He had a hit in 7 of 10 with three multiple hit performances. He was rolling in the series. And, again, I go back and I look at that series, and I think a lot about Josh Bell and Jake Berger. Josh Bell in that ball game was on base five times with a single, <laughs> a fielder's choice, a walk, a run scored, a walk, a run scored in the eighth, and the single, and he scored in the ninth inning. Jake Berger went three for five with a couple of singles, a couple of RBIs, three singles and two RBIs. Now, look, I know Luis Arise was a, was a massive contributor in the ballgame, but to me, that Josh Bell, Jake Berger thing, 
creating. You know, yeah. by the way, two guys that are back, obviously, going yeah. into 2024 yeah. here. But they had such a monumental impact in, you know, the Marlins with nine walk-off wins this season, 33 um, one-run victories, 41 comeback wins. This, this, this kind of added on to it. I, I, you know, again, as I, as I talk about it now and I start to relive it a little bit, I won't forget Jeff Nelson saying the Yankees are desperate for a win. This was a rubber match, so they bring Clay Holmes, their closer, into the game. Double and a strikeout, so you got a guy on first. You're yep. up by how many four. was it at the time? This was, this they, was, they were up by four. Yeah. Right, so they're up by four in a non-safe situation. You got a guy on second base with one out. The Stallings or the um, the Fortes Infield single. single yeah. Right, remember that was that was the that was the single. The walk, the E one. The, the the Yankees could not stop the bleeding. They ultimately bring in Tommy Canely there, and then he walked De La Cruz, and then then Berger got the single. But an improbable victory for for what felt like so many different reasons. Again, but at the same time, it's what we came to expect from this team this year. I remember this particular moment was for me, Miami buying in to this team. Because again, this was the attendance of the year. I mean, this was 100,000 plus across three games here at Lone Depot Park and 35043 or 3543, the third largest, not counting opening day on that Sunday. I remember that moment. I think everyone started to believe. I think internally, you felt like people were starting, like the comebacks became normal. I mean, I remember getting late in games and being like, all right, well, here they come. Like, this isn't over. You know, certain moments, certain scores that you think are done, it just wasn't. So I remember from this particular comeback, the fan base and then just Miami embracing the Marlins and being like, all yeah. right, you know, and um, I, I, I don't know. Did you feel that way as far as like the fan base and just the city of Miami buying into this team? at that Yeah, point? I mean, I think I mean, it was obviously a massive game because, it, you know, you, you, you're in you're in the middle of August. You're, you're teetering. You, you've 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 found your footing again after a disastrous start coming out of the all star break when. You know, they, they were in Baltimore, and then, yep. you know, it, it, it kind of transpires from Baltimore, there. Baltimore, St. Louis, I remember Correct. that. That was so right. tough. Right, and they got walked off by Arenado yep. in St. Louis, and, you know, it was it was just a bit of a disaster. So they started to find their footing a little bit, and they would gotten themselves to a point where they're 61 and 57. This got them back to five over at 62 and 57, and, again, in an improbable fashion. You don't – there's very often you, you're not winning a game when you're down four in the ninth inning, especially yep. when there's a one out and a guy on second yep. base. You might catch that run in. You lose by three. You just go on. They, they go on to beat the Astros next night. Um, you know, I, I think for you personally, it sounds like, you know, you, you, you said that you felt like that's when they started the buy-in. Yeah. I felt like I at know. that moment yeah, it was like, all right, this is – because a while the narrative, Kyle, I remember this being like the Marlins are beating up on bad teams. You know, and I know the Yankees didn't have a great year this year, but they still came in a couple games over 500. They were looking to turn their season around. But I remember that stretch where the Marlins were beating the A's and they were beating certain teams, the Royals. People were like the Royals. You know, but I think the narrative was true because their schedule didn't get really tough until the back end yeah, of the year. Yeah. So it's the narrative was correct. They were beating bad teams, taking care of business, which is what good teams correct do. Like the correct. narrative was just true. Yeah, they were beating bad teams, and that was okay. Because if you want to get to 83, 84, 85, 86 wins, you better beat those bad teams. And that's exactly what the Marlins did in the first half. And I think it's fair to say that the Marlins may have ended the Yankee season from a yeah, morale standpoint. Do you remember the New York Post that following day with the oh, yeah. title was? I remember Sleeping Michael with Case the call. Yeah, it was terrible. And I remember Michael Case call going back and listening to it. Um, no, was their season over? No. But it felt over yeah. after that Sunday afternoon. They 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 really never re, re re got it. They never got it together again. Uh, you know, at that point they were sixty and fifty eight, and they had a disastrous finish to the season. Who knows if they beat the Marlins, they win that series. They're sixty one and fifty seven, probably still feeling okay about themselves in the American League East and maybe the wild card picture. I agree with you. Marlins ended the Yankee season. Kyle, um, this was my favorite comeback of 2023. Uh, again, we appreciate you joining us. This will be flipped into a podcast on our podcast page. But again, thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time on Marlins Rerun.